Watch to find out why are these miracles signs of a new golden age? Hello, this is your host, David Minot II. It was only a few years ago that several of us who are now working on Planetary Makeover were part of a team producing the show Share on the Air Radio. Many of the topics we discussed during the show's run between 2015 and 2017 are as true today as they were then. So for this particular episode of Planetary Makeover, let's step outside of time with Diana Gold Holland interviewing Planetary Makeover producer Francis Omen, who has a history of documenting miracles, including the crop circles that have been shown to be made by UFO craft. This is your host, Diana Gold Holland, broadcasting from Vancouver, and yes, with a message evolved for sure for everyone. It's a very great honor today to be uh, hosting a show on miracles with the producer of our show, Frances Oman. She is a writer and TV producer who has won numerous awards for her documentaries about miracles and the emergence of Maitreya. Her work has been seen on PBS and the Discovery Channel, and she is now making a new documentary called Countdown to Now, Quantum Leap for Planet Earth. It documents the fulfillment of predictions made by Maitreya, the world teachers, decades ago about our current crises and the grassroots solutions now in progress. So it's my very great honor and excitement to welcome you, um, Francis. How are you? I'm just great. Okay, that's good. So to begin with, tell us what a maven is and what led you to become the miracle maven? Yes, well, um, a maven is actually a Yiddish word originally, and it just means an expert or a connoisseur. And since um, about, should I say how many years ago? Let's just call it decades ago. <laughs> <laughs> we know where that's coming from. <laughs> um, I was a meditator and a student of uh, various new thought practices, and I was realizing that my greatest creativity as an artist and as a journalist, because I have both skills as my background, they all flourished, both the art and the writing, when I approached my work with a vision that anything is possible. Not like not like I believe, you know, I could build a skyscraper with my baby finger tomorrow, anything is possible. But just looking at my life and then seeing what kind of draws me um, forward. And so when I heard Benjamin Krem speak in San Francisco, and he talked about the possibility of really ending hunger. Well, I happened to have been a videographer for the Hunger Project when I went to hear Mr. Krem. So I was already on board. It was actually um, quite a few years later that I connected the dots because when uh, Earhart, who founded the Hunger Project, originally announced the Hunger Project, he said to, I don't know how many, it was probably a auditorium full of a thousand people, he said, um, sometime around now, there's been a shift in the wind. The end of hunger is an idea whose time has come. And later, years later, when I connected the dots, I realized that he said that two weeks after Maitreya appeared, made his first appearance on this planet in Nairobi, Kenya. He appeared out of thin air, thin air did several healings, and then disappeared this was corroborated we've talked about it on I've other shows about it on the on other shows so this was about two weeks uh, after that yeah so i figured that was pretty much a miracle and i was feeling pretty smug about being on the right path and everything um <clears throat> so it was also covered on cnn mm -hmm. but anyway it, i i was definitely on a path and um my skills were in videography so um my background in art 
really art was a spiritual practice for me. And between the art and the, um, the approach I had to documenting facts, fact checking in my, in my work was it an odd combination, but a perfect one for somebody who was going to set out to document miracles. <laughs> wow, well, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of our listeners would think, you know, first and foremost of those religious ones that are occurring, you know, the bleeding statues and the, the, the oil smelling of roses and, you know, uh, those kinds of, of miracles that are happening for the religious people. But, you know, you and I both contend that there are other kinds of miracles happening that are just as miraculous. And that includes political things like uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall and, and um, you know, peace miracles of that type, the various rapprochements that occur suddenly and people say, what happened between those enemies? And uh, so we have, we have religious miracles, we have political miracles, and we have peace miracles as well. And, and also all of the healing miracles that um, uh, I know you have many stories on that front, and we talked about several of those with Patricia Peachon. I just wanted to mention uh, another one of these religious ones that occurred this week when the image of uh, a beautiful image of the um, Virgin Mary appeared in a window in kind of um, oil slick type colors. And was that um, in Marietta, Georgia? That's the Marietta, Georgia one. And people of all religious persuasions are flocking to see that. Uh, because, well, that's unusual. Well, well, no, not really. Because, um, you know, most of the th miracles, things that I followed up, do attract people because it awakens in them. They, they want to see it for themselves. And then it awakens in them. I just it, somehow... A, a feeling of expectancy, of hope that, you know, something's going on here. The mystery of it draws sure. people and they well, want to see it with their own eyes. They, uh, you know, when I was working on my uh, Crosses of Light documentary, I, what, what I was surprised at when you said that is when I was doing that documentary, there were throngs of people in line and the police were out in force just kind of keeping order. Not that there was any danger, but, you know, just directing traffic around all the lines, but they were all deeply devout Christians. So when you said that at this um, new miracle in Georgia that happened this week, that people of all different religions are going, that's, that's what's happening is things are happening amongst all the different religions. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just, there's a lot of commonalities between the religions and, you know, quite a, apart from the things you mentioned that are the most commonly known, um, Christian miracles. Um, there's miracles happening in so many different religions that people don't hear about. It's you know what? The thing is that, that I, yes, they're miracles, but to me, they're signs. Yes, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're all connected like what about your white buffalo story that that um, that yeah. you, you told me about? I was working on um, a three part series on miracles for with a Discovery Channel called Miracle Quest, and um, one of the stories we did was on the white buffalo born, and as a sign to the um, Native Americans of a great coming of uh, a new spiritual time, but another one was a red heifer that was born and the Jewish, um, what would you say, um, tradition is that when a red heifer is born, and in both cases, a white buffalo and a red heifer, it's like it's like one in a million million. So it really, it, you know, they didn't have any lineage of white or red in them at all. Right. So they were real miracles. Yeah. And um, so when I interviewed a rabbi for the Crosses of Light, um, documentary, he said also that many of the, the Jewish scholars say this is the time when the Messiah comes. So um, that was interesting. Then in the Muslim religion, you know, they don't they don't believe in using um, graven images. I don't know if they call it, they call it graven images, but they don't use iconography. That's right. in the, in the right. religion at all. So the miracles that have been happening in the Muslim within the Muslim faith for those people um, have been things like this 
lovely young um, Muslim girl who was crying tears of crystal Ooh. that were so sharp that, you know, they were coming out of the corners of her eyes and they weren't cutting her at all. And she said when interviewed that um, she had first had a vision of um, a man on a white horse. Now, it's, it's a tradition, a Buddhist tradition, that the great new teacher is going to come. That there's a Himalayan legend that the great new teacher will come on a white, all dressed in white, and a white horse. And that's what she described. Right. That and was he, the legend of the Chintamani stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, remember we, we reported previously on this, uh, the white horse is also a very powerful uh, symbol for, for Muslims. And that's what this girl, girl was. Yes. And... And then at Tahrir Square on CBS, see, the cool thing is, I just like to collect things and put them all in a, together and see what they mean together. And that's what I've been doing with miracles. So when uh, Tahrir Square was happening and um, on CBS News, here is this glowing image of a white, a, a person dressed in white on a white horse driving through the clouds it crowds it looked it looks kind of like a ghost but it was definitely in there it was on several different um broadcast stations yeah. and so there's that white horse again so francis you have directly experienced some miracles of your own i'd like you to tell us about that first i have to preface it by saying i have um you know an, an angel and a devil on each sh shoulder i have an angel that's just open to all the miracles in the world and believes so many things. I just do it intuitively and it's like painting a picture. And then on, on my other shoulder, I have this little devil, which is a journalist saying, um, this really needs to be scientific. And so I really do check my facts, but I've had several miraculous experiences that I have not included in any of my documentary work because I have to uh, maintain my journalistic um, objectiveness. <laughs> okay, well, tell us one. <laughs> tell us something really personal that has touched okay. you. Okay, well, I went to document the first cross of light that appeared in El Monte, uh, east of Los Angeles. It was glowing through a frosted window, and I was told where it was, and I climbed up a ladder with my camera on my eye. <laughs> I mean, you know, at my eye at the camera right. and looked through the window. So I didn't even see the cross with my bare eyes the first time. And I said, oh, my God. And this just it was like something like physically just went whoosh to my heart. Aww. And um, so I, um, I kept working on the documentary. And I remember one day during that period of time, I had – severe migraines. And unless I was working on the Cross of Light documentary, I was in bed in pain. There was something about my commitment to the documentary that just got me up. And so I had finished, oh, I don't know, the fourth or fifth day of interviewing all these people that had been healed of cancer and they'd been healed of drug addiction and they'd been, um, um, yeah, I hear the whole community really changed, you know, like the delinquent kids shaped up and got their yeah. grades in schools. And, uh, you know, I, I heard, weren't there marriages reconciling and all kinds of stuff, like yeah. really spreading throughout the whole community. Yeah, it, absolutely. And so at the end of this one day of interviewing several people, I was sitting there and I was sitting about two feet from one of the crosses of light. I just finished interviewing a woman whose doctor had said she couldn't have another baby because her uterus was ruined. And um, she was holding the baby that she gave birth to after mm -hmm. the doctor mm -hmm. did that. Um, and I suddenly realized that I hadn't had any migraine that entire day. They were gone. And I just started weeping. It was uh. just... You know, it's like sometimes you just don't notice when the pain leaves, you know, <laughs> you're just so used to it. So that was a really important migraine because I'd had migraines severely for 10 years. Wow. Another one was um, not during that filming. It was, in fact, just in my 
private life, you know, unlike a lot of other spiritual teachers, Maitreya is not in the habit of manifesting things, you know, out mm -hmm. of thin air. Right. Although I did hear the CNN report said that he pulled out of his pocket after he had a cross that was like a glowing made out of light cross. Mm -hmm. So, um, but other than that, he doesn't go around manifesting things. Well, he also appears in all different kinds of guises to people. Some of the listeners have undoubtedly had encounters with him as a homeless person or um, a very straight businessman or. Okay, but wait a minute. I want to get back to this. Uh, so oh. he's not usually manifesting things. So obviously he manifested something for you. He What's the story? He did. He did. Um, I was, uh, my dad had died and I was very depressed. I was prone to depression and um, that just sent me into a tailspin and I didn't think I was going to be able to make it to this business meeting I was supposed to show up at. And I was waiting in the hotel lobby and along comes this very nondescript gray suited businessman walking at a kind of a very strange quick clip down the center of the lobby and he just suddenly veered over towards me and he stuck his hand flat out into the air right over my lap and for whatever reason I stuck my hand straight out in front of me several inches under his hand and and there in the air between our hands suddenly there was this shiny silver stone or something that fell into my hand and I looked at it and it said hope Oh, there's a picture. <laughs> um, well, that's not the end because the depression completely lifted. And I went to the business meeting and gave a very inspired presentation when I was actually considering going home. So let me just make a point here. OK, yeah, like please. we always we always mention this in our show so that people know where we're coming from, that we on this team believe that we are not alone on this planet, that we have help of a very extraordinary time at this extraordinarily difficult moment for, for our planet, and that that help comes in the form of the reappearance of the Christ and the Masters of Wisdom. The Christ being also the Messiah for the Jews, the Mimamadi for the, Islam, uh, the Muslims, etc., etc. He is, in fact, the world teacher predicted to come at this time, at the beginning of this new age. Gautama Buddha was the one that, that said Another Buddha like myself will come at the dawn of the new age, and his name will be Maitreya, he actually said. Buddha got that right, but all of the other religions have been predicting the coming, the, the, the second coming for the Christians, the Messiah for the Jews, etc. You know, they've all got it there, and there are a lot of people who may be our religious, but certainly you know, it's there's a tension throughout the world now. We know that the, the shoe is going to drop somehow. And maybe, just maybe, um, it, it, it won't be, uh, you know, in a bad way. If we call forth the help of these teachers who are in working and helping every day in our midst as it is now. Anyways, um, that those are our premises and we're sticking to them. So let's hear some about something about the miracles you covered on your Crosses of Light documentary. We've had um we've had a question come in on Facebook about that from a, a listener. Oh, you mean asking me to tell some things that happened there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh okay. when you when you were the so, well, some of the miracles that you covered in your Crosses of Light documentary. Yeah. Um. Well, it was interesting because what you were saying about the world teacher being here for people of all religions and also of no religion because one of the people that had a cross of light appear was an atheist. She was a woman who was having a creative block. She was a painter and um, she just couldn't paint. And um, she went into the bathroom and there, most of these uh, crosses have been manifested on, on frosted textured glass in bathrooms because that's a place that kind of glass occurs. The, the normal shape uh, on uh, if light is shined through, one of them is kind of a, a normal square. But she went in there, and suddenly there was this cross of light. And suddenly her creativity returned, and she painted like crazy, and she was just thrilled. And when I interviewed her, she said the same thing, that people clear across town with completely different backgrounds, a Muslim man who had a cross, a 
a devout Catholic who had a cross and this um, young woman who was an artist. And they were all saying the same thing and they had never met each other. They were saying, this means the end of hunger, the end of pollution, the end of war. And um, I found that to be really amazing. And then 20 years later, I was working with the Discovery Channel on this Miracle Quest um, series of documentaries. And so they had the idea, well, let's be a little bit skeptical and see if these crosses are still burning over in El Monte, east of, of uh, Los Angeles. Right. But let's let's not go to one of the Christians. Let's go to the guy who was named Muhammad, who had who was a Muslim, and he had a cross of light. So I said, sure. So um, when we went back to visit him, the cross was still glowing, um, and um, he told a story. He had heard about these crosses. And he was an electronics kind of a guy and interested in stuff like that and wanted to either disprove it or see if it. So he had shown a flashlight through his glass because there has to be a single point on the other side of the glass. And it was, you know, this. A single point, point of light, you mean? Like yeah, a, like a yeah. flashlight. Okay. Yeah, like a flashlight. So he yeah. shined a flashlight and it just had this regular square. Well, meanwhile, his baby was born and had a horrible illness. It was some like black spots all over his body and it was very. And he was sitting there holding the baby in a rocking chair and suddenly said to himself, he just kind of knew, I've got a cross of light. He went back and tested the same window and lo and behold, there was a cross of light and the baby was completely healed. And when they did the Discovery Channel redo of visiting him, his son was at that time going to college. So oh, fantastic. So sometimes these things stick around. You know, I had that kind of thing happen too. I was giving a lecture on the crosses of light one time and somebody brought me a piece of that glass that they had found in a, you know, a value village and the cross formed right before my eyes as I held that glass in my hand. It was incredible. Look at the um, cross of light picture that's there because people have had extraordinary healings just looking at the cross. You don't have to be in the presence of one. If we can just put one other thing out there, um, look at the story of the hand of Maitreya that is there, because that is another extraordinary miracle that we've talked about uh, in, in other shows. It can be invoked for healing, for, you know, psychological problem, and, and it is a direct connection with Maitreya. He can then work with you to the extent that is karmically allowed and um, and that's another extraordinary way that he has of, of helping out. So take a look at that. It's it's the picture is there. It that picture can be used in any form. You can print it off and put it on a piece of paper on your fridge, whatever. Um, it doesn't matter. You can look at it on the screen, and it's kind of the same thing as these crosses of light that are emanating these blessings to us now. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back to the um, the. Um, your documentary countdown to now quantum leap for planet earth. Um, first of all, what's it about? Well, it's about this huge paradigm shift of consciousness that all the new thinking people are talking about, but um, it's way less airy fairy than a lot of discussions that are going on. And as you probably know, the term quantum leap is a scientific term. I'm using it as a metaphor for a leap of consciousness because it's about the definition of quantum leap is there's some energy is applied to the photon. I, I don't know if I have all my scientific knowledge exact, and it suddenly appears in another place. So um, sort, of, sort of like a time warp or something. Well, sort of. Anyway, I, I, I have a marvelous... Um, astrophysicist that I interview who also happens to be a Christian minister. How about that for a combo? But that's kind of symbolic of my approach <laughs> to the show. And and my more journalistic and somewhat scientific bent um, had me respond so strongly when I read Cyan that um, St. Augustine wrote, Miracles are not contrary to nature. 
they're contrary to what we think we know about nature. And the masters, my try on the masters, and the space brothers and sisters, they're masters not of other people, but they are masters of science. They are masters of a science that someday we will be able to use too, and we're beginning to learn to use it in this huge shift of consciousness. So in my, I am pulling together interviews from people who've been touched by Maitreya. I'm, I have a lot of documentary work on the um, beneficent um, space brothers and the UFOs and the resistance of the government from telling the truth that they are here to help us and they have tons of documents. Many countries have put right. forth their documents. You actually filmed some crop circles for this Countdown for Now, didn't you? Yes. Why, why did you call it Countdown for Now? It's called Countdown to oh, Now. Sorry, I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Countdown to Countdown Now. Countdown to Now. It's sort of a paradox, isn't it? Countdown to Now. And that's part of what I mean because um, – and I do want to get back to the uh, – when we went up in the airplane and filmed the crop circle. That was very exciting. I got too many thoughts cooking at the same time here. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, why did I call it Countdown to Now? Right. Well, because, well, Gautama Buddha said that we create our future with our thoughts, and we do that now. So, yes, it's a paradox, but it works. And my, my film really helps to dispel what we think we know uh -huh. so we can be open to all of these calling cards, all these signs and miracles and unprecedented demonstrations in the street, the voice of the people. And for the first time on, in our planetary history, cooperation at the level that happened for the um, Paris Climate Summit, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it didn't hand, begin to handle – well, it did begin to handle it, and it's not total for sure, but my God, the whole world hasn't ever – done something like that. So these things are all related to each other. And the things that I'm documenting, pretty much they're all in the news. But people hear, hear about one thing, one place, one thing, another place, and no one sees that they're all together and that there's this scientific thing happening of creating, when, when the masters create miracles in different religions, they do it in a way that the different religions will actually know that for them, this is something that's, something's afoot. Right. Well, like the, um, one of the ones in that glossy I was telling people about is uh, in Muslim homes, the, they're, they're splitting open fruits and vegetables and they're finding, you know, the, the calligraphy for, you know, the, there is one God, but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. I'm sorry, I may be misquoting that, but there is a famous saying, there is one God, but no, but Allah. And, 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 and so the calligraphy for that kind of thing is showing up when people just, you go to cook and you cut open an eggplant or a tomato or what have you. And, and the reason that I find that so significant is, as we said, the Muslim people do not use images of like, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't get, uh, or statues or things like that. So they don't get the statues of the, of the Virgin Mary that's, you know, exhorting people to, to come together and, and save the world. They get something that works for them. Yeah. And, and for those of you who are skeptical about tomatoes and uh, eggplants having writing in them, another Muslim, uh, miracle that happened was this little, um, a uh, goat was born, little white goat, and in very clear black calligraphy, it said the same thing. Right. There so. was also another story in Share International years ago about some person that um, had to feed a lot of people and, and got some chickpeas with, with crosses or with some kind of symbology on them. And... Um, you know, managed to feed many, many more times the number of people that we would normally... Um, feed with that i'm sorry you just you just sparked sparked me with that particular one as well going back to the food anyways the point is that the these are all signs for all different people so that they can find that kernel of hope and expectancy that maybe it's not all this bleak maybe there is something really magical happening yeah. and that they would get to participate and in in my in this film i'm working on right now 
um, I'm really, um, by the way, it's, I'm, I, I feel like Maitreya is going to be making himself known with the other masters very soon. I mean, I'm guessing six months or something and I'm no expert. Um, however, it just feels like all these predictions are coming to pass and, um, I don't have time to finish my documentary countdown to now. So I've decided to start putting it up in segments on YouTube. Um, and, um, you know, there's a general commitment to thinking that we'll always have hunger and justice and war. And I really want to pull together, like you said, you know, political, economic, social, spiritual, all these different kinds of um, miracles and um, breakthroughs that are happening in the world because um, they're making a point that if they're real, if they do have to do with this one story that we're <laughs> gutsy enough to <laughs> keep talking about for 40 years or how of 30 years, I guess um, with all of these things happening, maybe there is a possibility for help to bring our values to pass. So what people can do is to take a stand for not necessarily believing what they think. I know that sounds kind of crazy, <laughs> but to really, to really approach things scientifically like anything is possible. Scientists have to do that. I mean, they mostly don't. They take a hypothesis and then they go and see if it's true. And I just invite people to do that because then what's going to happen is that you're going to see actions to take that you would not have seen before. And maybe after the break, I can talk about how the media has been totally uninterested in our story. We're here with videographer Francis Oman, the Miracle Maven. And um, Francis, um, I need to take this in a different direction just briefly because we've had a question come in to the show from, from a newbie who is wondering who Maitreya is. So, um, duh, clear as that may be to us, we really uh, need to fill that in. It sort of starts with a fact that used to even be in the Bible but got deleted about 600 AD, which is about reincarnation. Um, all of us, according to most religions, including Christianity, before that got changed, <laughs> um, teach that we keep coming back and we keep leaning more, learning more, and we keep evolving. And the uh, our amongst us brothers and sisters, our brother who has made the least mistakes and made the fastest evolution is Maitreya. So for the person that's that evolved, he takes on this title of the world teacher um, and works with humanity from behind the scenes. Now, he also appeared um, in relationship to other religions, and I'm not going to go into all of those details, but he does, as Diana said earlier, come to fulfill the hopes of all the different religions that he doesn't want to be known as a particular religious teacher. He's not a religious teacher. He's an inspirer. He is here to teach self-realization, meaning to help train us to be the sci inspired scientists of life. Yeah, but he's also called the Maitreya the Christ because he embodies the Christ principle on this earth at this time. That's, yes, he that's does. his function, that's his role. And uh, one surprising thing I found out about this uh, through the readings of Benjamin Krem, C R E M E, the principal spokesman for this whole story, um, is that um, the Christ is not actually a person but a role. It's a role in the hierarchy of these very enlightened beings, perfected masters, and that role is to simply uh, embody the energy of love on a given planet at a given time. That's who a Christ is and does. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And so now we had Jesus the Christ, and now we have Maitreya the Christ. 
at the beginning of this age, just as Jesus came at the beginning of the last age. Even though Gautama called him a Buddha, but, you know, the name Christ means the anointed one. So uh, it's, it's pretty exciting because it's a real, that's why I liked at the beginning when you talked about this new Christian miracle in Marietta, Georgia, that all these different religions are coming to see. Um, the, the strife between the religions right now, we talk on this show about the news, the views behind the news. All of this strife that's happening is in reaction to these tremendous cosmic energies and energies of love that Maitreya and these other masters are pouring into the world right now. And it's, it's like a healing crisis, you know? It's like you, yeah. have, you have a cut and you get pus and then you get not to name any particular people that might ever run for president. Um, some um, pretty nasty characters are being stimulated and the greed and corruption that's already there is really coming to the surface. So it looks like a lot of bad news, but it really isn't. It's a healing crisis. And Yeah, you know, in Maitreya, in his messages book that I've told people about, um, uh, he talks about the sword of cleavage. And the sword of cleavage is mentioned somewhere in the Bible, you know, separating the sheep from the goats. I don't understand that image, but it was a shepherd race back then. <laughs> Anyways, um, he talks about just that, that all of these, um, you know, with the, with the waning of the Piscean Age and the arrival of the um, Aquarian Age, that all of the lesser qualities of the age dying out are coming to the surface. And so we have all of these political scandals. We have all of these political absurdities. We have a lot of stuff like that going on. And But to cite a very, um, very clear example of this, we have the massacre that occurred in Paris just a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, that, that horrible um, incident spurred on so many people to come out on the side of tolerance and, you know, forgiveness and, and just reconciliation and all of that kind of thing that it is even though it looks like a terrible event it is actually hastened um you know the approach of of that that's available for maitreya and the masters to come before us we they need they need to be invited and um that was was one example of within unity where maitreya can can actually use those um use those energies well, it's a very, very exciting time on this planet to be alive. And we um, have a large role to play. Maitreya says, I'm not here to save you. I'm not here to fix everything. I'm here as an architect with a nice set of drawings. And um, I'm here in response. All the masters are here in response to your own invocative cry like we know in our hearts that we want to have everybody fed we want education free education medical water all of these things that are Maitreya's priorities and he's coming to advise us and whoever wants to work on a project there's going to be all of these masters many of them are already coming forward all over the world in various all the different countries of the world and they're already starting to work with us on these projects so even during the first occupy some of these masters were actually as protesters because they can appear however they want hunkering down with the kids and and really encouraging them to cooperate and to help you know have the library and the medical and you know how cooperative that first occupy thing was and these masters have been at all the demonstrations. Um, right. They are definitely among us, and they are definitely here to help and counsel us. You know, we're almost out of time. I can't believe this, Francis. Let me just um, give a couple of announcements, and if we have time, we'll come back to, to a last word from you, okay? Oh, good. Yeah. I just encourage everybody that your thoughts are creating the world. Mm -hmm. And this is what Maitreya is teaching amongst all his other marvelous teachings of detachment and sincerity, authenticity, and all the other things he's teaching. Pick a place to 
create your world, whether it's in your family, your neighborhood, your country, or the whole planet. Get active. Everybody's doing it. Join the wonderful young people and elders who are putting their bodies on the line in demonstrations. And, um, and let's just all stop living from what we think we know about nature. Well said. Thank you, Francis. Oh, and before we go, I also want to invite people to check out the Circles of Light, this one of these miracles, um, cr kind of urban uh, crop circles that are appearing on buildings everywhere. They are one of these miraculous things. They are a calling card, a gentle calling card from Maitreya and the Space Brothers. Yeah, I kind so. of poo-pooed them until one appeared on my building and reflected down onto the sidewalk. And when I stood there in the light, it was... It was a very strong experience of love. So Yeah, that's great. So just before we go, as the music comes up, wishing you the very sane, safe, and bright new year. Stay with us here for a minute to see a short trailer for another interesting episode called Protesting is Our Soul's Responsibility for the Future. We have starvation throughout the world, perhaps 25,000 people dying daily on a planet with a 12% food surplus. Nobody should be going hungry. The only reason they are, it's a lack of political will. Just being hopeful will not work. Time is passing. The planet is being devastated. People are going hungry. Something must happen. And in order for governments to act, I remember hearing a politician say, make me do it. We have to 